Hi everyone, it is the start of a new vlog. It is Sunday the 27th of June and we're in Lancaster because we're going to see our friend Jen Ashworth and Chris has brought scones. We're going to go antique shopping. Jen's doing us a Sunday lunch. I'm just turning up. <laughs> so that is the plan today. Off we go. Morning, Millie. Hello. Morning, everyone. It is Monday, the 28th of June. And while I wait for a cab to take me to the station because I'm off to Portsmouth for a couple of days for work, I thought I would have a chat with you about booky things. Because even though yesterday was bookish in the fact that I was with lovely Jen Ashworth, uh, it wasn't like booky booky because we mainly antique hunted, uh, had an amazing Sunday lunch, and I spent hours playing with Brody, her dog, which was a delight. I'm becoming more and more and more of a dog person. So that was yesterday, and we got back and we were knackered. So reading just didn't really happen. It did happen before I left, though, because I did finish and Cleves the Long Call, which Grace from GK Reads chose for me in an independent bookshop last week in a reading vlog, which you can see down below. I'm not going to tell you what I thought about this now. I'm going to leave you on a cliffhanger until my wrap up. So uh, yeah, not long to wait. Portsmouth is quite a long way away. And I'm a bit mm, about going back to Portsmouth because I used to live there and I was a hairdresser there for a while. And I had a very, very, very horrible relationship uh, with a very, uh, it was quite an abusive relationship basically. And I left twice, went back once, crazy but sometimes you do. I haven't been back for 20 years so I think it's going to be very very different and I think I'm in a, I was talking about this yesterday with Chris, but I feel like I'm in a really strong position to sort of look back on that time and sort of see where I've come to since and anyway you know what I mean so but I'm just feeling a little bit tiny bit anxious a little bit trepidatious but I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine I'm also seeing my lovely 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 assistant Tess that she's joining me tomorrow so that'll be really really good anyway what am I taking on the train first of all the book that I kept seeing last week and nearly buying because it's set by the sea I was at the sea and I just held off because I was like so why buy a book that you've already got this actually came unsolicited and I wasn't sure at first the more space I've had since knowing about this book the more I wanted to read it and it's Margaret Kennedy's The Feast and it's set in in the summer of 1947 when a hotel collapses and gets buried um, and it's about the people there and some of the secrets I think they've kept buried and all sorts of things so I'm really really intrigued for it it's also quite chunky and with what 12 hours of trains ahead I need a good chunkster so um yeah I'm really 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 excited about this so I hope it lives up to the sort of hype I've now created for it in my head I think it's also um a classic that's kind of come back out or they've republished so yeah we'll see my only slight concern is that it says the miniature charm of a baby Austin and I don't get on with Jane Austen's writing too much although I loved Persuasion and its snarkiness. Then I'm going to do a bit of rereading also with a seaside theme but I am off to the seaside so it seems that maybe that's going to be the theme of this vlog or maybe it won't be. Who can say? Who can tell? Only time and you will know by the end of this. Waffle. I've read this before but I'm doing an event with the author on the 5th of July for Waterstone so I want to give it a reread and it was one of my favourite books of last year so I'm excited about rereading it. It's The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I love this. It's set in 1617. It's based on true witch trials and yeah all that stuff so looking forward to heading back to that and then non-fiction wise I'm taking with me Gay Bar Why We Went Out by Jeremy Atherton Lynn. I've been rubbish at reading this and I really like it when I read it but um, yeah, I've not given it the time it deserves. It's very naughty and salacious and cheeky. What more could you want? I don't know whether I'll be able to read this on public transport or not. We shall see. Um, and last but not least, in my ears, because it's so bloody massive, is Book Club Pick, which is for my in real life book club. Well, I say in real life, we meet online on Zoom, but it's the book club that I set up 11 years ago with my friend Kim and my friend Polly. And Polly took over when me and Kim left, but I rejoined because everything's digital. And Polly, who I've known since I was four, chose this bloody big book and it's watching the English by Kate Fox I'm going to have this in my ears as I'm sure download it on audible um, and listen to it on audiobook so uh, yeah that is what I am planning on taking on that now I better go and I will uh, probably see you on the train
Well, I am in my hotel and how Love Island is this bar behind me. I'm so excited about Love Island tonight. Before I go out of dinner, I thought I would show you that I fell into foils where I met a lovely bookseller called Tim who came and said hello. And yeah, it was a real treat. I had a lovely, lovely chat after I bought some books. Well, four books as you'll see. And um, before I got my train, so that was really, really, really nice. What were the books that I got? Well, um, when I walked in, there was an amazing queer display which had Can the Monster Speak by Paul B. Precadio, which is non-fiction from Fitzcarraldo Editions, who I mentioned in my last reading vlog, and hopefully this one won't fall apart. This is a speech that they gave, quite kind of like a TED talk about being a trans man. So I'm going to read this very, very soon, possibly tonight, actually after dinner before Love Island, because it's only about 60 pages long. And um, then they also had, and I hadn't seen this either, um, Las Buiti Queens, which is introduced by Pedro Almodovar. It's about a group of trans Latinx immigrant friends who walk the streets of New York, smoke crystal meth, compete in beauty contestants, look for clients in their impossibly high heels and fall prey to increasingly cruel immigration policies. And I just thought this sounded phenomenal. I'm desperate to start this one as well. And um, the books that I've packed are sort of fading into the distance slightly. One of the books I'd gone in to get because I really wanted to get um, Jacob Ross's first crime novel because I know Grace really loves that. And also after reading The Long Call and enjoying um, A Queer Detective, I wanted to get Fire Watching. I have the sequel to this that has arrived in hardback. I believe this is A Queer Detective too, so I thought, okay, I'll get my mitts on that. Or Pride Reads, because then I also, out of the corner of my eye, spotted this, which I had no idea was coming out from, once again, Fitzcarraldo Editions, Bat Lava Lake by Adam Mars Jones. I love Adam Mars Jones writing. I love Box Hill that came out by him uh, with Fitzcarraldo last year or the year before. And I also, well, I've loved every book of his that I've read so far. So four books, I haven't even got myself to the independent bookshop in Portsmouth yet. I haven't even got my dinner yet. Um, but um, yeah, managed to do this. And I'm wondering if I can get the Jacob Ross ordered so I can pick it up in Waterloo on the way back. We'll see. Anyway, now I need to go and get some food before I try and possibly read this before Love Island. Morning everyone, it is Tuesday the 29th of June, the penultimate day of June. I get very excited about new months, don't know why. Because um, also I don't like time going too fast, so it's very odd. Anyway, blah blah blah. Did I get any reading done yesterday? Mm -mm, no. After Love Island, I fell asleep, basically. One thing I did want to mention is, I was feeling quite nervous and apprehensive about coming back to Portsmouth because of my history with it. But because it's so different 20 years on, which it should be to be fair, um, I've not had any feelings of that sort of residual, well, I guess trauma from it. So um, yeah, that felt really, really good. I was on and on about going back to my old house, but you know, I just don't think I need to. There's no point. Anyway, enough of that. You want to hear about the books, you want to hear about me waffling on about all sorts of things. I did not, as I intended, read Can the Monster Speak by Paul B. Preciado last night, but I did read it this morning and I thought it was very, very powerful. It's about 60 pages long and it's basically um, a lecture that he gave on um, gender dysphoria to a load of psychoanalysts who have sometimes treated people with um, or trans people or people with gender dysphoria or non-binary people very, very ill. And as one himself, he talks through it. This was actually um, quoted from and misquoted from actually more than anything several times after he gave the talk. So what he decided to do was have it published. I will say it is quite academic in parts, but what I've found really insightful is the way that Paul talks about it's not about escaping, but about a way out. And testosterone was his way out of the dysphoria that he felt. Um, it looks at his lesbian past, it looks at his time as a woman, um, but looks at the difficulties with you know, his relationship with gender in a really open and fascinating way. There's also some really, really insightful stuff around how 
um, as a trans man, he is a man, but also where the toxic masculinity plays within that. I would definitely recommend it if you want to hear more about the trans experience, because I feel like I learned a lot with this. Um, so there we have that. Now today I'm off to um, a Carnegie Live, which I'm very, very excited about because you don't get many of those to the pound. I'm also a little bit, again, nervous and apprehensive because it's an event with um, a group of refugees who've been reading Small Island for the BBC novels that shaped our world programme, libraries programme, and Small Island is one of the novels. It's going to be how they respond to it and their stories and stuff, and I am just renowned for at these library events are bursting into tears um, because I just find it all very moving. I find libraries so powerful and I find what they do so incredible, but also hearing people's stories just sets me off. I don't know what it is, um, but there we go. I'm meeting my assistant Tess shortly and uh, we're gonna have hopefully a lovely day together. And then it's the football at five o'clock and then Love Island after that. I mean, how am I gonna fit in tea? Hi everyone, it is Thursday, no it's not, it's Wednesday, the 30th of June, I still don't know. I mean, you could go back through so many of my vlogs and just see how how many months it's been that I've not known what day it is. It's quite a lot later on today, I've got come all the way back from Portsmouth, and I say all the way back, so it does take about six hours. I then went straight into a two hour meeting with the Arts Council, which was really informative and fantastic. And I just thought what I'll do is I'll have a catch up with you all now and share some books that have come in the post. So yesterday, emotional roller coaster, not in the way I was expecting. I was very nervous about going back to Portsmouth because of having had such a horrific uh, relationship when I lived there in my late teens. But because it's changed so much in 20 years, like you would expect it to, I guess. Um, and also 20 years makes me feel so old. It didn't, it just, yeah, that city that I remember wasn't there really. What was an emotional roller coaster was going to one of, well, to the amazing Carnegie Library in Fratton in Portsmouth to an incredible workshop with a group of refugees who are reading Small Island by Andrew Levy, which is one of the novels that shaped our world and part of, therefore, my Novels That Shaped Our World Libraries programme. And they were, yeah, this group of refugees, like I was saying, were responding to the book and, and how they engage with the text, but also telling their stories of how they'd come to the UK, which was incredibly hard to listen to and incredibly hard for some of them to tell us um, but then how they had made their home in the UK and how much they loved living in the UK and what their hopes and aspirations were and it was just an incredible incredible experience and I really would like to try and find ways that I could engage with um, and, and sort of do something for refugee groups around here so I'm going to look into that. I mean I cry at a lot of these events that I go to because I just find the power of people and books and libraries and how they're responding to books and the creative ways that libraries are responding to the novels and all the brilliant things they're doing it just yeah it gets me so there was that and then it was the football um and i ended up crying at that as well because you know england won and it was yeah it was just i don't know what was up with me and then i was sort of a bit numb through love island enough of that for now let's get opening these parcels shall we so we have in here oh Rob Doyle's bibliography, which I don't know anything about. He recounts a year spent rereading 52 books. He documents the memories they trigger and the reverberations they create. I can't even say that. He documents the memories they trigger and the reverberations they create. It is a record of a year in reading and a lifetime of books. Sounds interesting, that one. But I feel like I've seen that one of them around on Instagram. Is it around Instagram? On Instagram, a bit. Oh, this is a finished copy of The Giant Dark by Saravat Hassan, which is about this rock star who is it like has become a real cult 
uh, has got, sorry, has gained a real cult following, which I think riffs off the um, Orpheus and Eurydice myth. So I think this is going to be really, really interesting. I've mentioned that, I think, in my books I'm most excited about in June video, which will have gone live. So I'll link it down below. But I should have put it live and I haven't, so I need to do that. Then I have The Khan by Sama Mir. I will be reading this for something work-based in the forthcoming weeks. Last but not least, I have, what's in here? Oh, The Dark Remains, which is William McIlvanny and Ian Rankin. And I get the feeling, this is also to read for work, that I think the author, William McIlvanny, I can't say it, McIlvanny, I think he died and Ian Rankin finished his novel off. So yeah, it's crime in Glasgow. So there we go. There are some more books for your delectation, some more proofs. I wanted something a bit more booky because it hasn't been... Oh, there we go. Some books that have come in. I am now, I don't know if I've got time to have a bath before dinner. I really, really wanted one. Hi everyone, it's Thursday the 1st of July. I have not long finished work. It's about 5.45, 5.50. Anyway, um, I have an event coming up, which I need to be ready for in about 30 minutes, but I thought I would have a catch up with you. I've been in back-to-back -back Zooms today because that always happens when I've been traveling for work because obviously signal on trains and stuff, can't have meetings, but also it was ultra busy today as I was doing all the admin. So I can have two weeks off from today until Friday the 16th when there is another uh, libraries event which I'm going to be going to which I'm very very excited and I'll take to that in due course. When I say I'm having two weeks off though I'm not really, next week kind of is, the week after although I've got like a couple of events and stuff lined up, more on that shortly, um, but uh, the week after that I'm actually filming for four days um, and I've actually got production meetings a lot tomorrow so um, yeah not really a holiday holiday but like a holiday from the day job if you know what I mean. So that is uh, where we're at. Um, I did realise yesterday I was so tired and I was so in need of a bath I didn't tell you that I'd finished a book and that I was starting another one so I'm going to do that now um, and that the book that I finished sorry is Las Buiti Queens by Ivan Mona Lisa Ajeda and this is about a group of Latinx immigrant trans friends um, most of them are sex workers in New York. It's how, well, it's all about their lives, really. It's short stories, but can be read as a novel because the characters all interlink. Um, and they're all told mainly from the perspective of Ivan Mona Lisa. So in many ways, this is autofiction. Um, and I think some of the author's experiences and what they have been through. Um, and we follow as Ivan Mona Lisa um, works the streets as they have to deal with the police, as they're sometimes arrested, uh, what happens in prison, how some of their friends are murdered, um, how some of them become addicted to drugs. And it's a very harsh life. Um, it actually, I think, is going to link in slightly to, I'm seeing In the Heights with Pip on Saturday, and a lot of this is set in Washington Heights, which I think is where In the Heights is set, and looks at that whole community, both the Latinx community and the Latinx trans community. And I found this so insightful, like so eye-opening and just so sometimes. And what this book's really made me think about what makes great writing. And um, because in no way is this flowery or like, I don't know, air quotes, we're going to do one thing going on, air quotes, uh, literary fiction, because it's very direct and very frank. And there's almost a slight lack of emotion because this is just how it is. Um, I mean, there are emotions when when um, some of their friends are murdered and when they're going through really difficult times themselves. But there's almost this sort of not distance in a bad way, like coolness in a I'm just going to tell you this story and these stories and you're going to have to just can listen. That I found very powerful. And actually, I think sometimes it's not about for me, a great book doesn't have to be about flower writing or about any of those sort of things. It doesn't even have to be like the pro... Flower writing, why do I keep saying that? It doesn't have to be about great prose, but what it has got to be is that the, the story's got to have a power to it. And this is really, really, really powerful fiction. And I just thought it was phenomenal. The short story fictions, I normally read them slowly, but this I was reading on and off on the train all the way back yesterday. Um, and I think I, the other reason I didn't talk about it yesterday was it was sort of settling in my brain a little bit still. And I think it still needs to. Anyway, speaking of books, I was going to start next 
um, the book that my patrons have chosen as my first read for July. But they're going to have to forgive me because I've chosen something else instead. But the book they picked out of four that I gave them, uh, four different titles that I gave them to choose from, is Liberty by Caitlin Greenidge. And I don't know very much about this. And this is actually going to inspire my next reading vlog. So I'm going to start this on Sunday. And what I'm going to do uh, over the week before I go to London for Chris's 50th birthday celebrations, all surprises, he doesn't know what they are, is... Um, read some of the books that I've meant to read in the first half of the year, particularly some lesser known ones, some that haven't got as much buzz and see how I get on with them. Also, next week I need to record enough videos to last two and a half weeks. I mean, really, seriously. Anyway, moving on. There's a lot of travel coming up and a lot of things going on. No wonder I need an actual just a week holiday at home. Anyway, so that is something that I'm going to head to soon. What I have started is The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Now, I have read this before. I started it in the bath last night again and just was instantly hooked. Spellbound, you might say, because the book is a well, sorry, the book is based on uh, witch trials that happened on the island of Varja. The book starts with a tragedy where the men of the island are out fishing and there is a, an awful accident and they all perish. And what happens is where I've got to now is where the women are dealing with that and where they've been in kind of this numb grief. But slowly but surely, some of them are starting to think, well, how are we going to survive this? How are we going to kind of keep things going? What's going to happen? And Marin, um, who is one of the characters that we see things through in the main, is kind of trying to work out what her position is. Speaking of witches, what I'm about to do, an event I'm about to do, um, is with our Desmond Elliott Prize winner. It will have been announced by now, as so I can say it. And that is A.K. Blakemore with the Manning Tree Witches. And I will have done a live on my channel with um, A.K. Blakemore by now and if you've not seen it i'll link it down below so that you can find out more and i'll put a little clip of that in too that is uh in about 15 minutes now i think so there we go that is an update a lot of chat there from me um but i don't know this week i feel a bit like i've not really read very much but i've still hopefully given you plenty of book content and also you shouldn't be reading faster to feed a vlog you should be vlogging just what you're reading as you go and how you change and decide what you're reading and all that kind of stuff as you go i think that's what i like in vlogs anyway so i'm hoping that's what you like in these and all the chat and seeing what people get up to and stuff that's what i really really like i like getting to know people behind the channels as well as what they're reading as they're reading it and all that kind of stuff and also sometimes I think it's nice not to include everything you're reading because then there are surprises in the wrap-ups and stuff and at some point I will do a June wrap-up me and wrap-ups I don't know what's going on there it's got to change we're halfway through 2021 it is my mission that for the rest of 2021 I will do wrap-ups twice a month after I've got the June one out Anyway, there we go. I will speak to you all later. I really, really need to get ready, actually, for this uh, live with A.K. Blakemore, which I'm very excited about. Honestly, this book, I've not been able to talk to you about how bloody brilliant I think it is, but I think it's absolutely phenomenal. It will be one of my absolute books of the year. It's just incredible. It's about the Essex Witch Trials. Um, but you can go and see the live with me and A.K. Blakemore to find out more about that. No, 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 no. I'm just going to check. Have you got some something sparkly on the go? Because I have, I'm here okay. with my uh, no seco. Uh, <laughs> You're so much more high def than me. I'm just using my little like laptop camera. <laughs> here she is. Morning. How are you? Hi everyone, it's Friday morning. I've just had a meeting with the Sky team about um, the stuff that I'm doing with the book club, which is very, very exciting. And I'll be able to tell you more about, I think more will be out next week officially. Um, but I think I'm allowed to tease you with some stuff. Back in my uh, Spice Girls t-shirt, why not? And uh, I've tied it, <laughs> you want to be able to tell because there are piles of books everywhere. I've given them to <laughs> and there, uh, I have given the library a bit of a tidy, but I do really, really need to sort it out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that more this afternoon. But before that, uh, my friend Sarah is coming around and Chris has made scones. And we're going to have a lovely catch up because I've not seen her for ages. Chris is working late for the next few nights, so I can do some late night reading, although it is the football tomorrow. Who have I become where I talk about the football so much? I almost don't want to record this and people have been laughing at me because I did my scones the wrong way around. It's cream and jam, not jam and cream. I don't know if I can even eat them. I mean, I can, but I don't know if I should. 
It's later on on Friday after the dreadful scone and scone. Do I call them scone? No, I call them scones. After the dreadful scone embarrassment and fiasco of doing them wrong earlier. Um, I've had some more meetings this afternoon and I've just been sat reading, but Chris is going to be home in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to stop then because we have not seen each other very much this week. And it'd be nice for us. It'd be nice for us to have an evening together. Before I tell you about where I'm at with Kieran Millwood Hargraves, The Mercies, I have not mentioned I have become addicted to licorice all sorts. I cannot stop eating them. I think I've had three or four bags this week. I don't know what licorice means you're craving or whatever, but oh, anyway, so there's that. Just thought I'd mention it. I might show you what my favourite ones are so that I can have one. I really, really love, oh, if I can get it, these ones that are the little, like, knobbly bobbly ones. I also, my absolute favourite, sorry, probably a mouthful. Um, my other absolute favourites are these, which are kind of coconut around the licorice. Um, good stuff. That was just an excuse to have two more of them. Um, but, oh, they're so nice. Anyway, um, The Mercies. I am on this reread, and I don't know if I mentioned earlier I'm rereading it because I've got an event with Kieran on Monday so the day after this will go live on my channel I'll link it down below if you'd like to come it's for um, Waterstones and is ticketed I've got up to about page 150 on my reread and I'd forgotten how amazing the tension is racked up both of like well the gothic nature of everything from the start and the drama then how Kieran writes about grief is just phenomenal um, but also this sort of power that these women have and they're realising that they're having and how that world's changing. And then the awful Absalom turns up. Sorry, I really, really need to get a tripod because my arm's just going to so easily. Anyway, I should have spent so much time on those licorice all sorts telling you about those. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, so yeah, Absalom has arrived and he's there kind of to bring the women into heel because there are whispers about them all over the place. So he has arrived and... The women are trying to be welcoming towards him, but obviously they're very nervous around him and they know that, that he could be bad for them. And because of that, they kind of steer clear of his wife, Ursa, who um, Marin does befriend and there is a tension that is building between the two of them. So yeah, I will report back more, possibly not tomorrow because I've got a day with Pip and we're like going to the cinema and shopping and all sorts and then it's the football in the evening but definitely on Sunday because I would like to finish it on Sunday at the end of this vlog although like I was saying yesterday day before whatever day it was that um you shouldn't be reading for a vlog you shouldn't be finishing off books for a vlog either life doesn't work like that it doesn't all finish on the right days but that's just me being me and uh, it's just the way I am so there we are anyway Right, an evening of telly and chatter and loveliness with Chris ahead, possibly some drag race. Hi everyone, it's Saturday and look who I'm with. Only me. It's only Philippa, also Pip. Uh, we have been to the cinema today, seeing yeah. the heights. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was all right. I thought it was really good. I thought it was all right. But it was overly long. I thought the songs were a bit not quite yeah. sing-songy enough. The choreography was amazing. The cinematography yeah. was amazing. But other than that, anyway, then we went and had some lovely food in Lunya, where I didn't have a single dish and Pip had loads. And then we've just been and got me a top for the telly. Pip's chosen me some telly outfits. And in a minute, Pip's going to be filming the beginning of another video which I'm going to do, which is going to be word association. But Pip, tell everyone how you are. I'm oh good, yeah, I've had a lovely day. I'm very full at the moment. I've had lots of food. As you've just said, I ate it all. So. She did. I've had a lovely little day. <laughs> a lovely little day. <laughs> Nana's day for two. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. And we will be doing a crime time at yeah. some point in July. Yeah, crime? Did you say crime? Prime time, prime time. It is prime time with you though, Pip. Oh, yeah. It's always prime time with Pip, but it's actually prime time. So uh, yeah, we're we'll doing that where we're doing, where we're talking about watch. What was the first one? Now we've got to the Thursday Murder Club, but also what was the other one that we read to go that we never filmed? Watch me, watch oh, no the one that was set in. Yeah, while no one's while watching. No one's watching yeah. yeah, so we'll be talking about that. So that's that. Bye. Bye. So Pip. Yeah. What's the first word? Seagulls are going insane. By the way, I should show you when 
couple of lovely old building. Um, anyway, um, Pip, what's the first word you think of when I say block? Board. Board. B O A R D or B O R E D? B O A R D. I've got to find a book <laughs> that's something to do with board. Great. <laughs> it was thinking of blackboard. <laughs> so she made block board. So this will be in one of my vlogs. And the real one that she's going to do because yeah, she wants good. to pick again really is good. another one that you'll see in a future video. Hi everyone, it is Sunday the 4th of July and I thought I'd film here because you can see I've put my two uh, Staffordshire fire dogs on the mantelpiece. I know you can't see the fireplace in here, it's gorgeous, old Victorian one, but there's nowhere else to put a sofa and it, this is such a nice spot because the sun really comes in and where the other window is, is where I film because of the natural light. So it is what it is. There are other fireplaces in the house that people can see. Anyway, um, today I have been finishing up the mercies. I'll tell you about my thoughts on that in a second. Um, but I've also just been trimming my beard and getting a bath ready and everything because tonight we are out for the first of Chris's 50th birthday shenanigans. Tonight's with his mum and dad um, at one of our favourite pubs. I will probably start the next vlog there because I'm going to round it off here. Um, but yeah, Chris isn't actually 50 until next Sunday um, when we will be in London for a weekend of all sorts of surprises and treats he has no idea what's coming um i hope he's gonna enjoy it i've gone to town a little bit um so better i don't know i'm joking so the mercies now one of the things i was gonna do was say oh i'm not gonna tell you more about the mercies or tell you too much about the ending because i don't want to spoil it for anyone and um, obviously this is historical fiction and it's based on fact so you kind of know if you go and look it up what is going to happen and one of the things that i think kieran does amazingly with this and i've talked about this before and i'll be talking to her about it again is how she goes about writing a story where you know the ending and you're still invested and feel like possibly something might change i guess it's because she focuses in on certain characters um, and in this case very much on marin and was i calling her ursula the other day i don't think i was because her name is ursa i'll check but i think i might have once accidentally called her ursula i'm so sorry if i did um anyway uh that's kind of where the direction of the novel goes, which gives it that extra something something and is brilliant. And I've realised actually all of the reads that I've read this week have been queer LGBTQIA plus reads again, which is fabulous. But yeah, I just I think it's so brilliantly done and the way the atmosphere builds and builds and broods and broods. I love the characters. I love what she's saying about um, how very like actually with the Mantra Witches, which, which is which, which won the Desmond Elliot. What I love about this and that book is how they show all the years later how very little has changed for women and how if you are different or if you're seen as too strong or if you're seen as not doing the conventional thing, then you are deemed other. And in this case, it was being named a witch. And now, obviously, you know, there are other terms that people would use. And I just, that to me, is so shocking and disturbing and worrying. I mean, I will say at the heart of this, well, at the forefront of this, it's just a ripping, brilliant yarn. And I think that's also where books can be really powerful, where somebody's writing just a really bloody good story that's got layers and layers and layers on it. And that is very much the case with this. So I'm really, really looking forward to talking to Kieran about this again tomorrow, because we did an Instagram Live last year. The link's down below if you would like to come. So there we go. I haven't read as much as I have in previous um, videos. I hopefully will be reading quite a bit next week. I'll definitely then be reading a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. You'll find out why on Thursday. I will see you in a vlog soon. But actually, I think the next video you'll get from me will be my June book haul part two, which, as everything with me, is belated. So I apologise. But I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what you'd like to see. Let me know if there's anything you'd like more of, less of. The whole shebang. Always interested in your constructive criticism. Um, yeah, I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.